my name is Christopher Rivera, and I'll be doing my report on Walt Disney Studios and Disney's history. Disney is a company many people have grown up with and has grown to encompass many forms of media we encounter every day. These forms of media include films, theme parks, games, comics, toys, etc. They own Walt Disney Studios, which is well known by just about everybody, but they also own other companies such as Marvel Studios and LucasArts, responsible for films such as The Avengers and Star Wars. They've been around for a very, very long time and started from very humble beginnings in Los Angeles back in 1923. The Walt Disney Company started in the rear of a small office occupied by Holly Vermont Realty in Los Angeles. It was there that Walt Disney and his brother Roy produced a series of short live action and animated films collectively called the Alice Comedies. The rent was about $10 a month. Within the four months, the ever-growing staff moved next door to a larger facility where the sign read Disney Bro Studio, later called Walt Disney Studio. A year later, in 1925, the Disneys made a deposit on a Hyperion Avenue lot in the Silver Lake District of Los Angeles. Construction began shortly thereafter. During the next few years, uh, many things... Many changes took place, including in 1928, when Mickey Mouse, Pluto, Goofy, Donald, and the rest of the Disney gang were born into the Disney company. And they have been well-known staples of Disney since. In 1937, uh, Disney's innovative full, first full-length animated feature, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, was released to critical acclaim and worldwide success. In order to expand and meet the expectation of his audience, Walt saw a need to increase the size of the studio. With profits from Snow White, he made a deposit on 51 acres of land in Burbank and began designing a modern studio specifically for the purpose of making animated films. Walt was personally involved with all aspects of designing the studio. Uh, from the layout of the buildings to design of the animator chairs. Nothing was left to chance for him. He wanted everything to be perfect for his films. His main concern was to produce a self-sufficient, state-of-the-art production factory that provided all the essential facilities for the entire production process. During the 1940s and 50s, many prominent animated features were produced in Burbank, including Fantasia, Bambi, Cinderella, Alice in Wonderland, and Peter Pan. Beginning in the late 1940s, Disney launched into the production of live-action features and television studios, as well as their animated feature TV shows and other films. The studio lot was successful subsequently expanded during the 1950s to include sound stages and production and craft facilities. Many of the interior scenes for Disney films were shot on the five live-action sound stages. Stage 1 was, specific, was part of the original lot that was built in 1940. It was used for filming the live-action scenes of Fantasia. Scene 2 built in 1949 in conjunction with Jack Webb who used the stage for filming the TV series Dragnet. A popular television show was also filmed there called The Mickey Mouse Club. Stage 2 was the largest uh, at 31,000 square feet, and Stage 3 was sp built specifically for 21,000 leagues under the sea, complete with a water tank in 1954. Stage 4, completed in 1958, was first used for Darby O'Grill and the Little People. In 1988, it was divided into two television stages, thus creating stages four and five. Well-known tenants of the stages have included Disney classics such as Davy Crockett, Mary Poppins, Pollyanna, The Love Bug, Blackbeard's Ghost, Pete Dragons, and Bedknobs and Broomsticks. These are all Disney classics that have been uh, watched many times throughout the years and continue to be viewed by families to this day. Other well-known tenants later included such things as Armageddon, Home Improvement, Ellen, MTV, Madonna, 
Brothers and Sisters, National Treasure 2, and Pirates of the Caribbean 1, 2, and 3. Across from the street from the studio now stands the new Feature Animation Building and ABC Building. This is where Walt was planning to build a place he called Mickey Mouse Park. There would be lifelike statues of Mickey and Donald, and guests could take pictures of their favorite characters and enjoy a train ride. However, as Walt's ideas continued to grow, he realized more space was needed to fulfill these dreams. Shortly thereafter, he acquired more than 200 acres of orange groves in Anaheim, California. Those orange groves became the site of Disneyland. Backlot shops were built to provide the many crafts and services required for the live action production. The machine shop, which is no longer in use, housed machines and equipment that produced innovative camera and production objects for the film industry. During the construction of Disneyland in the mid 50s, the shops engineers designed and hand built many automobile train parts, boats, trams, and carts that were required for the new park. Of course, Hollywood Records now owns this building. Close by, there is also the electric and plumbing building containing machines and equipment for repairing and maintaining the systems within the studio complex. Nearby also was the staff shop where they made molds, fiberglass, and fiberglass figures, many of which are now used in Disneyland and Walt Disney World. Uh, next nearby also was the special effects shop, where the craftspeople created a myriad of unique effects that have come to be associated with Disney films. Flying cars, spaceships, miniature paddle wheelers, and medieval armor that comes to life. All, all came from this department. In, 19, in the 1950s, as live action s films increasingly played a major role in the success of studios, so did the inclusion of visual effects. Such memorable films such as Twenty Leagues Under the Sea and Darby O'Grill and the Little People began the tradition of combining complex optical effects with miniatures and matte paintings to create rich fantasy worlds on the screen. These later included such films later on such films were made such as Alice in Wonderland, Lady and the Tramp, Peter Pan and the Jungle Book. And then even after that, other well-known classics included Aladdin, Lion King, Beauty and the Beast, and The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Uh, another stage, which was Stage C, was originally used for recording uh, of various sound effects for the animated features and short, sound, short subjects. Many of the unique sound effect props and gadgets for these processes were invented by Disney technicians. Today, it, Sage C serves as the dubbing station for films and television. It was recently renovated in 2001, and like other stages, it features uh, an all-digital state-of-the-art system. For a few years after his death, many people came up with the theory that Walt Disney was cryogenically frozen within Walt Disney Studios. This, of course, was proven false, but it caused a lot of funny jokes and funny ideas about Disney planning to revive Walt in the future. And the joke has, been, of course, been made with Di the new film Disney's Frozen. In recent years, Disney has grown to encompass Marvel Studios and LucasArts, known for the Avengers and uh, Star Wars. They're, they were responsible for the most recent Star Wars and Avengers film. This has caused some references from past Disney films to appear in the newer movies, including in Marvel Avengers Age of Ultron, where Ultron quotes Pinocchio, uh, stating, I have no strings to hold me down. There were, of course, some anger from fans of the Star Wars film when Disney came to own LucasArts because they began killing off beloved characters in the new movies and basically stating that a lot of the books of what happened after the original six movies are no longer a part of their new universe. Possibly so, they wouldn't have to take all of that and make it into film. This may be subject to change later on, of course. Who knows? Disney has been around for many years and encompasses many forms of media, to the point where it seems they pretty much own everything. And that's probably pretty accurate.